Hello, my name is Brian Cole and I serve as the fifth bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of East Tennessee and I live and work in Knoxville, Tennessee. But today I bring you greetings uh, from the Church of the Atonement in Fish Creek, Wisconsin. Now while I bring you greetings from the Church of the Atonement in Fish Creek, Wisconsin, I am here at the diocesan office in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, in my office here and later we will be in the chapel for the rest of the worship uh, this morning from atonement. I don't need to tell you, I'm sure all the clergy this summer have acknowledged uh, this situation we're in of COVID-19 and finding ways to stay connected uh, as God's people but doing so in a safe way. So that involves this summer that Susan and I are not with you uh, in Door County, not with you uh, for meals and for worship and for conversation running into you uh, at the grocery store uh, or just walking along Cottage Row. So uh, we miss you and we're grateful for your ministry and the ways in which you all have continued to reach out and bless people across this country. I also want to acknowledge um, the death of Stephen Pay, uh, the very Reverend Stephen Pay, who was with you earlier this summer, a gifted preacher and teacher. Uh, and so my prayers are with you as many grieve uh, his death and uh, the people of the Diocese of Milwaukee and beyond uh, who've been blessed by his ministry as you have. So keep the Pay family in your prayers. Uh, the Atonement community, while centered in Fish Creek, touches folks across the country, across the world. Uh, earlier this summer, I, earlier this summer, earlier this year, I was in Rome, Italy uh, for the week of prayer for Christian unity and was with Austin Rios, uh, went to, who went to high school in Green Bay and many of you know the Rios family and their connections to, to Door County and to Wisconsin. He now serves uh, as the priest at St. Paul's uh, within the walls in Rome, Italy. And we had a great time together with the, for the week of prayer for Christian unity. I had a chance to meet the Pope. I thought, man, 2020 is going to be a great year. And then uh, we're all now living in the midst of COVID. So know that you are in my prayers. I ask that you pray for us here in East Tennessee and in Knoxville as we all learn to do work in new ways, in different ways, and we continue to find ways to stay connected. Uh, I'm grateful for the creative ways that Deb Shannon uh, and Tom Lacey and all the folks involved in leadership uh, in putting these uh, videos together. I've watched several of them. They've been really well done. Uh, you should be really uh, pleased with the ways in which you all are offering good and uh, thoughtful worship uh, beyond the doors of Atonement Fish Creek. Uh, this morning on the 13th and on the 20th of September, I will be joined with Kyle Ritter, who is the canon musician at All Souls Cathedral in Asheville, North Carolina. Kyle and I were on that clergy staff for many, many years, and we've spent many summers together in Door County. So it's good to be with you even as we are dispersed this day. Uh, as you continue in the worship today, there'll be opportunities for giving. Uh, you'll notice that in the PDF if you open that up, ways to support ministry. Uh, at Atonement. Atonement has a real important impact uh, in Door County through outreach ministries, through a variety of ways. You all are a blessing to many, many people. And when we can be back together again safely, I remain so heartened that your doors are open at Atonement, that in a busy and harried and uncertain world, uh, Atonement is a place where people find refuge and safety, find a place to pray and to be recollected. We will be together again this will be over at some time. Uh, you and I will share a meal together, a Eucharistic meal, but also uh, a meal of um, fish boil and all the things that make uh, Door County disc Door County. So we are grateful for you. It's good to be a part of you today. And if you are not a part of the Atonement family, but you found them online, welcome. Uh, Atonement is an amazing community of folk who have roots in Door County, but also have roots in Chicago and St. Louis and Milwaukee and Madison and beyond. Uh, good, good, thoughtful people who welcome you uh, with the joy of Jesus Christ, uh, rooted in the Episcopal tradition, uh, but open to all. It is good to be with you. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 376, Joyful, Joyful.
So I mentioned earlier that our worship would continue uh, at the chapel at Diocesan House in Knoxville. However, we are at Church of the Ascension in Knoxville. Uh, this is a church that has a history uh, with Ann Tui's father, so it's uh, fitting that we are here today in worship. This is also the church where I was ordained bishop uh, in December 2017. So we are now in the space of Church of the Ascension in Knoxville. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his people now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. We may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now hear our readings for today from Exodus 15, Psalm 114, and Romans 14, 1 through 12. The first reading for today is from the book of Exodus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walk on dry ground through the sea, the water is forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw that the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 114. Hallelujah! When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, 
Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The seas beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, in the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. The epistle appointed for this morning is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, 
You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mentioned in the welcome earlier that uh, in January of 2020, I made a trip of a lifetime to Rome, Italy. I was there uh, as a guest with people from St. Paul's Within the Walls Episcopal Church to celebrate uh, the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. Uh, the highlight of that trip was an ecumenical uh, evening prayer service that included Pope Francis, and I had a chance to meet him briefly as he meets many, many people every day, uh, but to join in an ecumenical prayer, uh, a, a week of prayer that acknowledges both the spirit of Peter and Paul, uh, a witness to uh, the Jewish people, a witness to the Gentiles, a witness to all God's people, uh, and the faith given to us through Jesus Christ. It was a powerful week, and I uh, had never been to Rome before, spent most of the entire time there in Rome, but I did make one trip, a train trip to Assisi. Uh, I'd been told that to, to go to Italy and to miss Assisi uh, would be something that I would not want to do. So I took a train trip, knowing that uh, in my life, I have to admit, uh, I've not read a whole lot beyond sort of the Wikipedia version of the life of Francis and Claire. Uh, I, if push comes to shove, I find myself at times more, uh, more uh, shaped by the life of Benedict and Benedictine spirituality. So I thought, but again, you're in Italy, you're close to Assisi, so I took a train trip. What happened to me that day profoundly shaped me and remade me. Had the chance to um, go into the churches there in Assisi and to see the cross, the enormous crucifix uh, that was in the church that Francis encountered in the midst of his conversion. That crucifix where he heard the Spirit of God say, Francis, rebuild my church. I found myself in front of that crucifix, uh, really aware and are not aware that COVID-19 and a year that would upend all of us was coming. But I, in that moment, definitely heard that sense of renew, rebuild the church. And the story of Francis and the story of Claire that has shaped so many Christians and so many people of no faith is their deep, incredible devotion to the least of these, to the poor, to the outcast, to animals, to all of creation. That Franciscan spirituality that is so simply focused on those who are without. And to realize an important call of the gospel is to find out who's not at the table, who's not with us, who is hurting, who is harmed. And this year of COVID-19, this passage from Romans is all the more important for us. That in welcoming the weak into the faith, we do so not intended to be critical of them and their opinions. Too often in the church, I think we think criticizing others is a spiritual gift, but it's not, I've looked, it's not one of the spiritual gifts. So this call in Romans is to acknowledge that any body of believers is made up of weak and strong. And a part of the gift and the call of being a body of believers together is to learn how to live together, how to acknowledge weak and strong, how to acknowledge a difference of opinions and yet somehow still be grounded and hidden in Christ. In this year, as we have, uh, as I heard it said by Scott Stoner a couple weeks ago, sheltered in grace, uh, we have had to really think about how our faith as Christians is a faith for others. It's not simply a sort of me and Jesus approach to the Christian life. We're not called to live the Christian life in isolation. I'm not called to live the Christian life in a selfish sort of way, but in a way that gives my life away to others. So as we have thought about the wearing of masks, as we've thought about uh, making good protocols around public health. We've done this not simply for myself or alone, not simply for me and Susan. But we've done this for others, that sense of wanting to be a faith for others. The Christian life uh, that we see uh, exemplified initially in the life of Jesus 
is a life that is willing to go to the cross for others. And so it is a life that shapes us as we take up crosses. We take up crosses, again, with the intention to live in a selfless way, to give ourselves away in order to find ourselves in the life and the love and the grace of God. When Peter asks Jesus about forgiveness and wants to know how many times, Jesus turns that question upside down and acknowledges that forgiveness is at the heart of the gospel. I've heard it said by Sam Wells, a British priest, that forgiveness is the justice of God. In this parable, uh, the man who's forgiven this incredible debt, this incredible debt, uh, he enjoys being forgiven. But when he's invited to forgive someone a much smaller debt, he wants a different kind of justice. He doesn't want a justice of forgiveness. He wants what he believes belongs to him. And so misses the whole story of what forgiveness does. You've maybe heard folks talk about paying it forward. Well, in this parable, it's, it's set up the idea that the man who's been forgiven much will forgive little, but he does not pay it forward. For him, this ability to be forgiven this great gift is something that maybe he believes he's deserved or that he uh, cried out long enough that his master forgave him. And yet somehow it stops there. He doesn't understand that this gift of grace, of forgiveness, is a gift that grows, just like his debt had grown and was completely eliminated. So that gift of grace could have grown in his life and been given to someone who owed him little compared to much. But he did not see it that way. You and I, as people of atonement, as people scattered across this country and across this world, we are living in a time when our faith is being clarified. Is your faith and my faith a faith for others? Where I'm concerned not simply for myself and my household, but for every household. The poor, the sick, those in exile, those forgotten. Jesus has a word for them. And that word is forgiveness, and grace, and mercy, and joy. And you and I are called to be about that kind of proclamation and that kind of life. So maybe you have never made the trip to Assisi. Maybe you've never stood in front of that incredible crucifix and, and heard that story again that reverberates in those walls to rebuild the church, to renew the church. Maybe you have. But if you haven't, I would say to you today, that call remains the call for all of us. Not just for Francis, not just for Claire, but for you and for me. This is a time to rebuild the church and to not necessarily get caught up in actual buildings, but to rebuild the faith of the church, the core of heart of the gospel of the church, a gospel of reconciliation, a gospel of amendment of life, a gospel of the doing of justice, knowing at the heart of the justice is forgiveness, forgiveness that heals and makes whole what has been broken, sets aright what has been neglected. This is a time that at some point we will come out of the time of pandemic. And when we come out of the time of pandemic, my prayer for you, for East Tennessee, for Wisconsin, for across this country, is we will come out with a faith that has been renewed, not a faith that has been diminished. This summer I know as people have been sheltering at home, maybe you've taken up the baking of bread, maybe you've taken up some new hobby. I took some time to organize my books. Now don't tell Susan this, but I discovered I had more than one copy of numerous books. So the, the Goodwill on Kingston Pike in Knoxville has a lot of books that uh, were in my house and are now there. But in this process of organizing my books, I also discovered a book I had not yet read. A little bitty book by Pericleet Press called A Life Together by Bishop Seraphim Segrus. It's a little book about community, particularly about how community has been shaped in the Orthodox East. It's a little book that I would commend to you, A Life Together, Paraclete Press by Bishop Seraphim Segrist. A couple things he mentions in there as I think about this time when our faith could be diminished, when our life could be diminished, he invites us to this idea that we are called now and into the future to serve the Christ who is growing in our midst, to realize that the good news is here and now and taking us forward into the future. That God is not in the business of diminishment. God is in the business of building up. 
and renewing and restoring. And we're invited into that time of renewing and restoring. My hope is this will be a clarifying moment when you and I will serve the Christ who is growing, the Christ who forgives again and again and again, most profoundly from the cross, even as he is dying, his last words are, Father, forgive. They know not what they do. At the heart of the gospel, at the heart of the cross, is a call to forgive. From Francis and from Romans, weak and strong together, we are to build up the body. To build up the body with deep concern for those who are without, to restore them and to renew them, and to realize we are in this together. We are friends in Christ together. And the stranger who we meet is made into friend because God has befriended us. God met us with debts great or debts small and forgave us. And our call now is to pay it forward in these days, these troubling days, knowing days of trouble will cease, but what will not cease is the Christ who has said, He will be with us always. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Father, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Let us now offer the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, by the power of God you were brought into this world. By the mercy of God you've been sustained in this very moment. And by the love of God revealed to us in the Christ, you are being redeemed. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 410. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.